Ragnar again. Another story in the episode of Karl Franz. I am Prince and Emperor! Personal attempt to become a standing and lasting Emperor. First, we have to destroy the Empire Secessionists. Well, the rest of them. We have no more movement, so we are going to Is tactically time? retreat. Of course. Make haste, men! One stuff. And we're gonna build up an army. Mm. We need some diversity. And we are going to look at some skills. Okay. I read about modification giving the champions, the legendary champions, some unique items. Ah, yes. Armor of the Emperor. This set of armor was forged by the unparalleled talents of Dwarf Smith. It incorporates some of the actual armor worn by Magnus the Pious during the Battle of Kislev. The armor is made of black Gromni and is richly gilded and adorned with ribbons and symbols of power. Oh my. We all oh, it rank three. I like that. And we have an imperial crown. The Emperor is chosen by the 15 electors and crowned by the Grand Theogonist. Karl Franz received this crown in 2502 IC, and it reminds all that he is leader and ruler of the Empire, the most powerful nation of the old world. <laughs> Take that, you Dwarvies. Leadership, size, effect, public order. Oh, the vampires won't like us. I like that. Especially diplomatic relations with the Empire will probably mean less conflicts with our neighbors. At first, we will go straight for lightning strike. In my experience, that's the best way to destroy enemies early on, because you, we can snipe them when some armies stand next to a city. And it gives us a lot of options. So we're going to go for Route Marcher. Yeah. Public order won't be that useful. I'm going to use France as a conqueror. Mm. Attrition and casualty replenishment are always very good. So untainted, uh, same as public order. No. We are going to go for leader of renown and for reassuring presence. But at first we need a lot of experience so we can upgrade and use our troops to destroy the enemies. And we have Genevieve. I hope I pronounce this name correctly. If I don't, please just tell me how it's done correctly. So, yeah. And let's go. She has a lot of spells. She is obviously a caster. We will go for this pit and the mind razor. Mm, nice, nice, nice. Dark Benediction. This is more or less useless. Lamian Bloodline. Lamian Bloodline may have the least predator appearance of all the bloodlines, but yet they are still vampires. Mm, less public order and cooldowns to spells and speed. We don't have that much mu public order. We're not going to do that now. Three decades spent with Master Poe surely have enhanced Genevieve's martial prowess. Oh my, Poe is back again. And Barmaid. During a time as Barmaid, Genevieve learned how the world works, money and beauty. We don't have any trade partners yet, and we are not going to use her as an agent, so melee defense and attack it is. And we will give her um, an upgrade to mystifying miasma so she can crush the enemies I'm, I'm not really convinced that it will be of any use because we are going for the anti-cheese tactic so we are basically just granting the AI our army and hoping for the best <sighs> the magic will of course be wasted but we'll see okay and now we are going for the prophet of sigma Mm, okay, this is locked until we reach a certain rank. This doesn't make sense, we don't have Folkmar yet. 
Mm. Grand cleansing. What is it? Denying the power of chaos with fiery passion, the warrior priest implores Sigma to protect his fellow Sigmarines from the ruinous power's perverting ways. Minus 10% to perform action. Grand cleansing, okay. We will go for battlefield control and power. And he needs a lot of melee defense. He has enough attack already. Wonderful. And we need to advance in Altdorf. Pottery and clay plates, it's in it's not very useful. You won't grant us big income and we don't need resources right now. So we have the normal military recruitment. Invincible Sigma Sam. Yes, 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 yes. I found a mod that will give us unique steam tanks. A lot of them actually. And Galopa gun, yes. And we will get a gun that will be carried by horses so we have a cannon with speed which basically means we will shoot everyone down I like it mm. oh my there's so many units and we have regional recruitment oh yes so every region of the Empire has certain regional units for example, we are in Reichland, in the heart of the Empire, and we will be able to build Reichland Greatswords, and Reichland Huntsmen, and Reichland Knights, and Pistoliers, and Demigriff Knights. Uh, oh, Re Reichland Demigriff Knights. We will build Reichland Mortar, the cannon, right now. And, yes, 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 another modification. Granting us some necessary aid from our allies, from our dwarvish allies. We can build dwarves. Yeah, I'm not uh, sure if we should. I mean, dwarves are, of course, not the Empire, and they are strong. Mm, maybe this is a better idea for later. What can we achieve? Some miners, warriors, warriors. Oh my, Dwarven Cannon, Flame can oh, oh, this is wonderful against Chaos or Orcs. We might take a look at that later. Oh yes, and one modification changed some building chains. A lot of building chains have gotten reduced down to level 2 and 3. And we will be able to go for level 4 minor cities, even though we cannot upgrade the walls beyond level 3, because that would be too overpowered. I made sure of that. And apparently Summon the I elector found counts. The fix for the absolutely impervious and overpowered Karl Franz, so now he is a little boy again with 5,000 health, that's cute. I mean, the vampire lady in a dress is almost as powerful as... Yes, and he's clad in Gromgill steel and yes. I'm not gonna poke on that topic anymore. Okay, we won't do that. No, 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 no. We will build the barracks later in one of those minor cities. It's, it's a waste of money. We're not gonna waste money. We need... No, we're not going for public order. There is a special building, there is a tavern that we can build um, later. We need a lot of growth now and we should get cavalry. Cavalry is always a good idea. But we also need money. Hmm. Well, we need, we need a full stack now, so we're going to go for money. And we are going to take a look at our attitude towards our neighbors. Tarbeckland. Oh, 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 they like me. Come then. Yes. Only on it. Oh, yeah. thank you. Your emperor seems pleased. All right. 
And they want to trade, maybe military. Fine. Oh, maybe even an alarm. A hundred denori for an alliance. Yes, so be please. it. Okay, so Talabek land is our what? ally. Greetings on behalf of the Empire. No, Aslan sir. Does not like us. Who calls? Midland. By Sigma's will, oh, come boy. in peace. Boris Todbringer. I'm pretty sure he wants to see us, Todd. We cannot. Yes. Yes? Nordland. Approach us, friend. Like I refuse. Rag tuggers. And yes, yes. That, that, that's one point that was bothering me. First, the icons. As you might notice, the icons have changed dramatically. Secondly, when you played Hans Marshall Marcus Wolfhardt, you were an expedition force of the Empire, yet you were in no contact with the Empire whatsoever. It was ridiculous. So I found a mod that grants you immediate trade rights with the Hunt Marshall's expedition because he <laughs> the Hunt Marshall's expedition cannot get any resources without the Empire. So, creative assembly. Why? Why did you give this on the beginning of every campaign. This is why mods exist, to make a game sometimes better. Okay, so we have only one Bretonian dukedom as our By the light of the lady. Doesn't really like us. The dwarves don't as well. They won't trade with us. Okay. And yes, 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 of course. And so. the new world colonies also, same modification now have at least basic trade rights treaties with us okay wonderful and we're gonna end our round let me just kind of take a quick look mm. oh yes the elector counts of the mighty empire each may have their own agenda but perhaps you can convince them to unite as one Yes, there is a huge mod, or there were several mods, to make each of the Empire groups... Well, cool. They have their own legendary heroes now, they have their own traits and interests. This should get very interesting very soon. Especially because, if I remember correctly, Elspeth von Draken also has access to a dragon. And with her dragon, she will probably go forth and she will slay all those foul tainted beasts to the north of the Empire. And I hope Beltagla Geld will be able to defend the orcs off because I don't like to meddle with orcs there stinking and bleh. okay so we are the elector count we are the emperor okay this was changed slightly dragon tooth okay and we have imperial foot oh if we have them uh, by the comet unit we can recruit them every 15 rounds that's awesome because as far as i can tell the imperial foots are absolutely extraordinary they excel especially in armor and life and they are extremely extremely upkeep heavy they cost five times as much almost as a swordsman that's not well four times something as a normal swordsman and we will be able to upgrade those into Teutogen guards or great swords the halberdiers into free what? Okay, we can upgrade halberdiers into marinas. That doesn't make much sense, but okay. Oh, Hochland Long Rifle. I like that. Prosper man can become sterile patrols. That's been fire. Fire is always a good thing. And Reichsguard can become demigriff knights with halberds or without. Okay, wonderful. Imperial decrees in the ecologies of magic, yes. That's a topic for later.
really like about mm, recent Total War updates mm, is that the round loading um, has gotten really fast. I, I mean we do have more than a hundred modifications and it's the entire Warhammer world at least to this point in Total War. Marienburg has not been part of the Empire since 2429 I see. When its Burgomeister paid a large sum of gold to the corrupt Emperor Dieter IV that guaranteed Marienburg's independence. There are many in the Empire who would like to rescind this deal. First and foremost, the Count of Nordland, the once nominal ruler of Marienburg, now forbidden to enter the city-state on the threat of death. What will your stance toward Marienburg be? Well, I have to deal with rebels, and Boris Tobringer will probably like to see me taught, so we are definitely going for. Ah, hello, you can stay independent. Oh, my. You can no longer declare war on Marine. Well, we can We? I hope we can confederate them at some point later, and this is not a mistake. But right now we are in no position to start a second or third war. We, we are not going to do the same mistake as Hitler. No, we are not going to do that. Your empire is a beacon of civility in a savage world, sire. Oh. It is your task, nay, your privilege, to see that it does not fall to the countless evils that threaten its borders. Study your own strengths and those of your enemy carefully. Yes, there is a modification that I have found and um, it basically gives you information to stuff that either happens somewhere on the campaign map. For example, if someone destroys a great derby hold or if you recruit a unit for the first time it gives you some information. Right now we I have command here. created an Empire Archer unit and it just gives us this little feed here for every troop. Mm, archers have been fielded by the Empire since time immemorial. Archer units are often regular bands of hunters and trappers grouped together to form their own regiments, ready to answer the call to arms at any given moment. Where their tracking, scouting and advanced archery skills will be put to best use. Armed with bows and swords, these warriors are adept at lure luring their quarry into lethal ambushes. For the full might of an imperial army can utterly destroy them. Archers are adaptable, often forming a loose skirmish screen before falling back behind their army's ranks when the enemy approaches. I like what? It's... Um, this sounds like a troop that we might use. And we have some state troops. Okay, this is interesting. So pikemen are state troops. And swordsmen are not. Okay, but that we're giving the swordsmen now their time. Swordsmen. Swordsmen are expert fencers and blade masters regarded as dashing heroic figures. This reputation, whilst somewhat exaggerated by the bards and poets of the Empire, has its foundation in truth, for swordsmen are amongst the most highly trained and proficient of the state regiments. So they are state troops. Of course they are. And we have something that is probably going for the pikemen, but it also accounts for these two elements. State troops. Every province and city-state in the Empire has its own standing army of professional soldiers, equipped and maintained at the expense of that realm. 
These brave troops are armed with a wide variety of weapons, from spears to handguns, but they are all known collectively as state troops. State troops wear the traditional colors of their province or city, bright uniforms with a mix of badges, hats and campaign symbols. There are no strict rules governing how these are worn or so, and so it is common to find great variation between regiments, although a soldier always endeavors to display his homeland's colors somewhere on his person. Okay. For example, a Midlander would include something blue in his uniform, perhaps wearing a blue jacket, trying off his breeches with blue ribbons or simply sporting an enormous blue feather in his cap. There are some notable exceptions though, such as the Scarlet Guard of Steelland and the Hochland of Black Shields, who are just a few of the many famous regiments in the Empire that eschew the colors of their province in favor of the, uh, their own distinctive uniforms. State troops are paid as full-time professional soldiers, ready to answer the call to arms at all times, in addition to forming a standing army to repel enemy attack. State troops also serve as city guards, military and police. And we were just at the middle of the sounds awfully familiar. The Firewatch and the Enforcers of the Law. However, most of the time these soldiers spend their days drilling and training with various weapons to be barked instructions of grim-faced sergeants and veteran marksmen. Every trade trains its regiments to fight together providing each other with mutual protection on the battlefield. State regiments often march to battle with detachments and differently armed troops to aid them. These detachments form up close to their regimental units, where they guard vulnerable flanks and provide battlefield support, either by joining their regimental units in the bloody melee of... My mass is faster than the Emperor melee of close combat or by showering oncoming enemies with missile fire. Swordsmen fight shoulder to shoulder with spearmen, the close range parries and ripostes of swords complementing the long reach of a spear. Handgunners and crossbowmen fell their foes with withering volleys of fire. But should a foe survive through such salvos, salvos a detachment of halberdiers will bravely intercept them cutting them down with heavy bladed polearms. And we do have one unit of halberdiers. Okay, Marienburg, we always have that story. Nordland disapproved. Of course they do. Of course. Okay. So, no great cheats for now. I mean, they have less income than we do and the vampires have Course have gold because they are vampires. And we currently are in war with the beastmen, the secessionists, and the skullsmen. Oh, yes, those bad boys. Maybe the Bretonians will take care of that for us? I don't know. Mm, we will take the Empire the now. Raise your weapons! And we will go for our tools well. This is just ridiculous. We have numbered them 3 to 1, we have the Emperor, it's quite ridiculous. Even the AI couldn't fuck that up. I think it's, it's the AI after all. Into Bring me to my men! Okay. Oh yes, and one big modification changed most traits. Traits are now actually useful. Which means that if you defeat a certain legendary hero, it can grant you big, big bonuses. For example, if we reach level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. No, level 7, I should be able to count. Of Confident Attacker. We will not only grant us a faction-wide bonus, 
but even 40% of leadership or size that's that's sizable that's nice sources report that middenheim is sending help to the secessionists in an effort to destabilize the empire intercept their reinforcements and demonstrate to Todbringer that there is but one master of Reichland. Uh-huh. That was quickly. Oh, of course, Middenheim is trying to send help to rebels. This is ridiculous. We have one Imperial Authority now, yes. What happens if we have... Oh, this is not good. This is not good. And this all, uh, yes. So if we reach minus 10 Imperial Authority, we will be obliterated. Okay. I got that. Your burgeoning realm grows, your eminence. Yet many evils still abound in this world. Yes, we must the Empire remain remains divided. And Sorry? Marauding green skin. Sorry, but no. Thank you. We, oh, Ludwig. Ah, yes, 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 yes. A lot of heroes will be added to the campaign. Well, they have been added, and we will be able to play them. Also, we will be able to play Ludwig Schwarzen. We will just have to win the Battle of Blood Pine Woods. Not now. Oh, the Commanders of the Empire. The armies of the Empire are led by warriors who have been trained to direct their forces as effortlessly as a swordsman wields a blade. First and foremost amongst the great leaders are the Elector Counts, inspirational and famous individuals whose mere presence can steady a wavering battle line. The knowledge that their Count is personally fighting beside them is enough to embolden the courage of a province's soldier and strengthen their resolve. In practice, however, it is unfeasible for Elector Counts to command every force that they must be dispatched. And for the Empire is a dangerous land and its territories are forever under attack from savage monsters and marauding armies. Often, command is delegated to a trusted soldier considered to be an honorable leader of men. And this officer will lead the province's forces when the Count cannot. Of course, there are always exceptions. And some of them the more bellicose counts, bellicious, bellicose counts, such as Valmir von Raukov of Ostlot, have an unhealthy love for the clash of swords and thunder of cannons, thus taking to the field of battle whenever they can. Many of the men appointed by an elector count to lead an army will also be nobles of the empire, educated in martial pursuits from an early age, falconry, swordsmanship and hunting beastmen into the forests. Others have risen through the ranks, having first stood amongst the rank and file with a bloody halberd in their hands. These officers vary greatly in standing, depending on the size of the force they lead, and can be known as captains, marshals, generals, or simply commanders. Regardless of their station, the vast majority will be tried and tested veterans of many years who have a fine understanding of the craft of soldiering, having spent most of their lives fighting in defense of the Empire. The commanders of the Empire differ greatly in skill and bravery. The Elector Count of Midland, Boris Todbringer, for example, is a ferocious commander and though his boldness and skill at arms is beyond doubt, his impetuous battle plans are sometimes costly. On the other hand, there are commanders such as Baron Kurt von Steinbock of Stierland, who has famously never won a single duel in his life, but who possesses one of the shrewdest tactical minds in the Empire. There are also, unfortunately, a small minority of Empire commanders who are little more than effete fops. They tend to be petty aristocrats who owe their rank more to ancestral titles and politing at court than to any actual experience of leading men on the field of war. Okay. We have to occupy more territory. Yes, this is exactly what I'm going to do. Now! Yes, we have rare points and special points. 
Yes, there is of course a normal limit to troops from SFL Grimhammer. And it seems that later on we will have special and rare points to spend. This is looking quite interesting. Yes, some more reassuring presence and more experience in the army, yes. And Genevieve will get more training. Oh, the penumbral pendulum. A spectral pendulum is summoned by the wizard. On command it swings, razor sharp, and with lethal speed through the foe. Strong versus multiple units, yes. So we can crush our own units because the AI is always misusing big spells. No, we won't still do it. Yes, we will replenish some troops and train more. Ah, holy decree. We will consider this later on. Who okay. Calls? So we will upgrade Grünburg, of course. Yes, we can upgrade it to level 4. Which means that we can build a lot of building chains to a, uh, well, quite high level in minor cities. Okay, it gives us 25 income more and it costs a thousand. 40 rounds until this is accumulated again. But we need growth, so we're going to do that. I am Prince and, and Emperor! And we're going to build more units. Mm, we will go... Oh. We don't have that much that we need it. We need the troops to destroy these secessionists. And we have no one that likes us. And um, thank you. I don't like you too. Yes, we have some imperial decrees. Even though they are overpriced as heck. Why should I pay 4000 prestige for 10 charge bonus for one particular kind of unit? It's ridiculous. I mean, research rate is awesome, especially in the early times, but not if you borrow Davi technology. 15 mi no. no, 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 no. We are going to end this round. Problem is, our campaign site is a joke. There was an army of secessionists right here. Ah, there you are. SFO Grimhammer, the capacity system, yes, okay. We will go for faction wide and army caps. I don't like Doomstack armies. It's just not very fun. So we're going for faction wide and army caps. What this is this basically? is putting a limit on each and every unit, interesting unit. And if you want to build more of a kind of unit, you have to build the building required to build the unit. And that gives you one or two or three more of the cap. And um, yes, this is basically there to prevent doom stacks. But if you have 20 or 30 cities with the same building, you can still doom roll those petty little dwarfs or elves. Monty elves. Pew pew. Faction wide and army. That's recommended. Quest issued. Uh, trade agreement with Mortland. I am a recruiter. Yes. Minus upkeep. This is actually useful. Minus 5% upkeep. Oh, I like it. Summon the Electric okay, Count. So there are two units we have in Greenbox. Oh, no. oh. Can I reach this? Sigma. This is ridiculous. Why can the AI cross this titanic distance in one move? I command and here. We can only get this far. I refuse. Well, it's the AI. What? The nation calls. Problem is, can they go this no. way? Yes, of course. Yes. Well, we'll need to advance. So we will go. Fourth, bring me to my men. They might have taken Guru and I'm sure they won't be able that. to protect against the hero. We will not do this. It gives us a hundred more income, which means we need 20 rounds to accumulate the money we just spent. And I'm not sure we want public order minus. No, 
Still no one likes us, yes, yes, yes. And we can start another round. The thing that I'm most interested in right now is um, all those event modifications. My lord, a rival power desires a change in your mutual Both. relations. Oh, yes, thank you. Bloody what? Overly fond of killing well. Servant of the Empire. I am Prince and Emperor. Beastsmen have grown numerous in recent years, deep in the forests of the walled world, in hidden caves, fetid, fetid jungles, and secluded desert regions. They await the fall of their chaotic masters. Will the tribes leave these areas to destroy and ravage the civilization of the world? Why would anyone press no? Yes. Yes, the beastmen will crush the civilizations of the world. That's what the beastmen are Ah! Okay, so not only... Marienburg, also Kislev and the Empire share a common history across hundreds of years. In the great war against chaos, we fought side by side against the chaos hordes. Now, with Norsken tribes threatening their borders, and rumors of chaos forces gathering in the east and north. Kislev is again in need of our help. Should we renew our old friendship and send material support to aid them in their struggle? Material support sounds like money. 5% all problem. Problem is, Kislev is extraordinarily important to the old world. And we cannot call Franz an emperor if he does not take care of Kislev. Kislev is a necessary shield against the forces of darkness. Yes. We will declare our friendship. By Sigma, no! Summon the Elector Counts! No, we are not. We will. I take command Uber here! Bushtra. Attack! No, sir! Okay. Obviously, the. This is not a siege battle. We outnumber the enemy. We have elite troops. And we have a bloodthirsty, magically screwing vamp vampire. Still, we are outbalanced. Uh, John. Creative assembly. How? Of course, we will fight this manually. Well, the AI will. Total war. Why? Why are you unable to grant us a decent auto battle mechanic? Maybe it's harder than it looks like. But the interesting thing is, in the latest days of Rome 2, I have a distinctive feeling that the auto battle mechanic was actually improved and then later on when they released Attila they destroyed it again and when they released Warhammer later on in 2016 they butchered my boy again even more so we still have our vampire with mouse, even though she hasn't fed yet. Dwarf Hammer does look beautiful. The battle map, of course, is still small. I mean, this is the battle map is tiny. Find me if you dare! Visually very pleasing. So My we subjects are going call. to give the entire army to the AI again. Oh boy. And this time. We will go for the perspective of the Emperor. Ah, that's an order! Oh, See to it! Friends. Very well! This is my command! So the Prophet of Sigma is obviously protecting the Emperor. I like that. And Genevieve is abandoning the battlefield because she can. Okay. 
by Genevieve. So we have My rule is absolute on our own. That was Genevieve. Oh, it was a diversion. Remove yourself from the sights and the spurs and magics. Absolute! Obey! To arms, men! Very well! We See to it! Yes. This what is my command! See. That's an order! My rule is absolute! Who has obviously decided to run around the schedule because the AI can't. Absolute! That's an order! See to it! Obey! This is my command! Very well! To arms, men! Well, from my rule is absolute! Nobody's there to look See to you. it! Obey! That's an order! Very well! This is my command! To arms, men! See to it! Okay. Very well! He has Obey! This is my command! Excerpt. That's an order! So we are going to take a look at My rule is absolute. Uh, That's an order. What See to it. Your name Two arms, men. My rule is absolute. Give them an inch. Very well. Hunts this is my command. Two arms, men. That's an order. Well, See to it. This is my command. Find him manually. Oh yes, there is a big, big. Is all 
Blood Lady. Alive. He punched him in the back. That's It's not cool. So, can we find Genevieve? No, we can already in this part. I'm just curious. Did you leave after we shoot the last two in the This is a battlefield, of course. There's a lot of bad boys and dead boys. And we are not able to retrieve the location of Genevieve. Okay. Now she's gone. Oh, she's. Oh, half. Oh, 90 units killed. So she got. Oh, yes, yeah, she got blood. Well, this story yes, is over. Sir. We have achieved a decisive victory. Albert von Sigurd and Hans Frankenwort. Two enemies of the Empire. Mm, who are now? Well dead enemies of the Empire, even though he seems to have managed to get away because the AI is <laughs> obviously unable to kill anyone running away. Well, this, wo this will be an anti-cheese campaign, so we have to make you with what we got. So I guess we have to destroy enemies at least always a second time. Oh my. Oh! Oh, yes, well, we attack the city, so they all died. But in the future, we will probably not be able to do that in the first battle outside the city. We lost 176 good souls in Emperor. And we will occupy the city again. Ulrich's we summon the Elector Counts! In the heart of Reich, we will not be savages and we will not raise a sack, a singular build. And we have the strike, and we have our beautiful training field, so we can delete this goodbye. Is it time? And we will build more. Oh, okay, okay. So we now have five rare points, and you have used six of the ten special points. Who is costing special points? Is there any way to find that out? So this is a core unit and bombs may have an unlimited number of core units. Yes, we will need at least 20. Execute battle captains. Yes. I command here. Mm, no, we will go straight to lightning strike. And irrepressible. It is said that a Sigma would bear a mortal wound and carry on fighting. This champion follows the hollow glory of God, which basically means that he will replenish at an extremely fast rate. After we will achieve lightning strike, we will go straight for quartermaster and no headhunter for us. So we can reduce our upkeep. We need money. We need a lot of money. And we have unassigned skill points. You will turn this corruption. And you will get on a horse. And... Well... Killed 90 units, so we are going to upgrade your pendulum. So you can kill more. I am Prince and Emperor. Absolutely and he will not. probably attack Green, but I'm pretty sure we won't be able to defend this. When the I'll AI ignore that. Control. I love this. I remember the old times when you played Rome 1 and lost. 
on an old HDD. And your loading times took you minutes. Now, if your machine exceeds the um, <laughs> console wall limits, and you got an SSD or even an M.2 SSD in NVMe, mm, you can load games Sword so man! fast that you will ask yourself, do I even have to bother reading the loading screens because I will probably not finish them before I... Okay. Okay, Fire so the AI takes control. Detachment <laughs> we will lose this city with almost certainty. First we need to find out where the enemy are. We have... The AI is not stupid. Hiding in the bushes around the corner. Hiding in the forest. Running away from one singular enemy. The hero system in Warhammer isn't perfect. It's a little bit problematic that a singular hero can destroy an entire army, even though this one looks dashing and a little bit off. Why? Oh, this is. Is his armor pink? Or is this just lightning? I'm pretty sure it's pink. We're going to take a look at this. Yes, this. Is this, is this pink or silver? In well, he does look a bit dashing. I like the artwork on his shield. He looks good in a sense. This is not pink. The, oh, yeah. Oh, the details on his sword are spectacular. I like that very much. And we can forward this one. We don't need to wait all the time for these mongrels to discover. Oh my, they are invisible. Oh my, the AI has no clue. And I hope she will. Well, it will advance. Because. Just moment. Shooting at you. Yes, no way. One running away is usually the least. Either for Troy, which will probably come out in Spring 21, probably, or for Warhammer 3. Oh no, sorry, sorry. Troy is supposed to release this year. Warhammer 3 is supposed to come out in Spring 2021. I'm relatively sure that they won't use any motion capturing for Troy because they always already said that. Um, 
they won't be using their monster models, for example, or their miniature, will just be a normal human made of grass. With a hat. I don't know why, but that decision at least that's what they told some of the people. And uh, so they will probably use the motion capturing for one or three. Maybe not for in-game, uh, I, I do think they will use it for in-game content, but maybe just for some cinematics. And, uh, cinematics will motion capture like some hats and looking awesome. So now we will just watch this brain so why? I like the officer system. It gives each unit some individuality. Also, as you might have noticed, we have a reskin mod, which means that every unit, well, most of the units look different to another. It seems that the greatest enemy of mankind right now has slain dozens of all men. And we are going to end this because this is getting ridiculous. The problem is if we do not kill him, he will attack us again. I cannot retreat with Karl Franz. Because we need to destroy the Sessionists, we cannot create a second army, we don't have the money. And he will bother us again and again and again. So we will have to wait for him to die. Because obviously more than a hundred men are incapable of killing him in any decent time. It's a problematic thing, the, uh, 
the general system. There are a lot of total players who do not like the legendary general stuff or the hero stuff in general. I think it gives a lot of depth and a lot of uniqueness to total war, so I am positively mooted towards it. Even though the execution is sometimes a bit off. Why? Why should a 20 year old human in an armor of no special kind whatsoever could compete with a, an ancient warlord a, a dragon like it's yeah okay it's hard to balance this stuff maybe they will succeed in balancing more units in a better way in Warhammer 3. I'm certainly um, going to find out when they release the game. Because Warhammer 2 might not be the best Total War ever, but it's certainly the best Total War we have right now. And there it is, our hero. Is this is heroic? <laughs> you lost 70 men to one. Ah, well, we need more. Yes. Thank you. And there he goes again. At least. Ooh, the wind is changing. With the college. Well, the gold college. Temporarily handed reins of Solent. 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 The other colleges are vying for positions of prestige and power. Their hopes to secure greater influence over you and the Imperial Throne, but all it is is causing chaos. Political machinations in the court are troubling enough without introducing seven colleges of wizards into the mix. To prevent the court undergoing further turmoil, you step in to choose which college will first serve at your side. Oh my. Well, I have to take into account not only the kind of wizard but also the bonus we will get. We don't need untainted, we don't need enemy leadership. What we do require is a fast growth of the empire, so we are going for a Jade or Yada wizard. Jade wizard! your pardon imperial si what imperial civil war middenheim is openly supporting the secessionists and greenskins are getting stronger each day oh my we need to resolve our problems quickly or things may get out of control the internal politics of the empire are never easy my lord but this is an opportunity to show other electors your might I'm pretty sure it's absolutely impossible to achieve more than th uh, at least a thousand prestige on level 5, so we ought to do nothing. The enemy is killed. I am Prince and, and Emperor. Our priest has been recruited. No. no. Well, his army should. Oh, yes, it can either kill him Never. now. now. So we're going to kill Ernst von von Volk von. Okay. No peace, just war. Step there to Ulrich's will. There we go. Oh boy, they have health. Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, we will have to fight the battle manually. Well, we AI hey, will. I'm just a little bit concerned because if the AI is not going to take care of the hell storm rocket batteries early they will obliterate all our infantry oh boy anti cheese compares and magically we have clan victory because OBS has decided to stop recording in the midst of battle because it 
well, obviously could. This is the kind of situation that I don't like. Mm, take on captives. No, we're not going to do that. We are going to pardon them so we can defeat them again. Oh, are we? Mm. We need the money. We don't need more captives running around. We will kill them. I am Prince and Emperor. Armbrust Schütz. Follower gained. And this is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned for more. If you wish to see more anti cheese action, of Gandalf. Gandalf has approached the battlefield. He's not Moses, is not just. Can we rename him? This is obviously Gandalf in disguise. Can we rename him? Character detail? Imperials? Ah, rename. Well, Gustav. Gandalfson. Hello, Gustav. No, not Gustav. Gustav. No, not Gustav. Thank you. This is it. Bye-bye.